If we had to pick a plant that we think would survive the next few decades as the globe heats, we would intuitively probably gravitate towards something like a cactus with its hardiness and its adaptations to survive in extreme dryness and heat. But as the planet grows warmer and drier, it turns out that these prickly survivors are actually at an increasingly growing risk of extinction. We haven't studied the impact of global heating on cacti very much because they're hard to study. A new study now has estimated that by the year 2050, in another 20 years or so, nearly 60% of all the world's cacti are going to be at an increased risk of extinction. Cacti are already among some of the world's most endangered group of organisms. Nearly 31% of all cacti species are threatened with extinction as of the year 2015. They are among the most threatened in the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species and are are in fact more threatened in status than birds and mammals. In the world today, there are about 1,480 species of cacti and while we imagine them to be hardy desert dwellers, they actually come in a great variety. Many live in rainforests, several live in high altitudes, whether it's hot or cold. Some don't even store as much water as succulents do and instead they have adaptations where they feed off morning dew. Cacti come in a great variety and while most species are native to the two Americas, they are now found all over the world. Many have different forms and physical structures as well. There are cacti that wind around trees. There are the ones that look like trees with proper leaves. There are cacti that have no spines or thorns. There are ones that hang down in clumps from trees and branches. There are ones that grow up like obelisks and there are ones that look like giant fallen worms growing horizontally on the ground. With all these varieties of cacti or cactuses, they grow in these very specific settings and they are extremely sensitive to changes in those settings and environment. Anyone who has killed a cactus or a succulent at home would know that despite their image as being able to survive in dry, harsh, desert-like arid conditions, they can actually be extremely finicky with their environmental conditions. Any slight changes can affect cacti drastically and kill them. Naturally, because of this, as climate change modifies environments all around us, these highly sensitive organisms immediately are threatened. In this new study, researchers from US and UK looked at 408 cacti species, nearly a quarter of all cactuses, and studied what would happen to their habitats this century. They analyzed the three warming pathways, RCP 2.6, 4.5, 8.5, which are concentrations of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and the severity of environmental effects from them. The authors found that irrespective of which pathway, whether the warming is mild, moderate or an extreme rise in temperature, many different species and types of cacti could die out because the area or territory in which they can grow tends to shrink. The authors conclude that overall 60% of cacti are expected in general to suffer declines in their numbers and geographical range. 14% of all the world's cacti are expected to suffer extremely strong consequences with decrease in numbers and habitat. Only one cactus species is expected to increase in range. All of these are still however preliminary findings. The thing is, we don't understand cacti the way we understand other kinds of plants. For example, we can understand a lot about the environment by looking at the leaves of a plant. Those who have house plants would also know that by observing the leaves of the plant, we can obtain nearly all the information we need about the humidity in the environment, the moisture in the soil, sunlight, fungal infections, excess nitrogen, increase in bugs and many other factors required to take care of the plant. Scientists can also extrapolate this kind of information and understand larger environmental parameters that trees are subject to. But cacti don't exactly have leaves, they only have modified spines and thorns. So how do we study them? 
we don't yet fully understand. We tend to think we don't need to worry about cacti because they're so adaptive and they can live without water. But that is not entirely true and we don't know how to measure responses to environmental changes in these cacti properly. Furthermore, there are additional factors that are endangering cacti. Humans actually use nearly half of all species of cacti for various reasons. Their fruits are nutritious, their flowers are pretty, they are a very good source of food, they are used in medicine sometimes for their anti-inflammatory properties, and of course they are used as houseplants and in horticulture. There is rampant illegal trading in cacti, especially the rarer ones, the ones that are endangered and threatened and tend to grow better in the wild. There are species of cacti growing in Peru, for example, that are used for ornamental purposes because of which over half their population has died out in the last two decades. Other non-native species introduced in native cacti habitats have also threatened them. And naturally, places where cacti are native to, the two Americas, are the regions where their populations are suffering the most, although cacti that are found in Africa and Asia are also under threat. Today we know that we are expected to breach the 1.5 degree mark already very easily and emissions in the atmosphere are cumulative with exponential effects every passing year. So we cannot reverse what is happening to the atmosphere right now. As we experience the consequences of fossil fuel emissions, we are now slowly going to start seeing cacti die out. These plants with their unique adaptations suited to unique places are going to slowly start disappearing as the globe heats more.